Hello and welcome to something a little bit different. Today I felt like going over my top 20 games of all time because it's something I recently made a list of and I had never really done that before. I already had some I've always had some uh, games which I knew I really really liked and were definitely in the top 10. Uh, but it, it, it keeps shifting and yeah, the, I never really got a list together, so I finally sat down, thought, okay, here's the list, and uh, well, I had a lot, lot, lot of games, and I'm not sure, I have honorable mentions and a subcategory, which is like online, roguelikes, you know, games that aren't really story-based, mostly, you know, online games and replayable games, you know, those kind of games, um, because that, 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 that's also uh, the kind of games I play a lot, um, but I felt like putting them in the top 20 would be weird, because there are some of the games in there that I would consider top 20, but I separated them because I felt like it was too different uh, from the normal list I, I would choose. There are some here. That, that may be considered like that a little bit, uh, but regardless, um, yeah, so, uh, gonna, gonna try to do this as quickly as I can, uh, I'm just on Google, like, uh, because, hey, it's easy to do this, I just wanted to throw some things together, because I wanted to do this uh, at the end of last year, but never got around to it, uh, but yeah, um, so, the first game is, is kind of maybe a strange one, uh, Burnout Paradise. Yeah, uh, a lot of these games are here for different reasons. Uh, some of them are personal, some of them I think are greatly made games, just solid games, great story, great writing, great visuals, great ga gameplay. Uh, a lot of it depends on the game and a lot of it depends on what I felt about it. So, why Burnout Paradise at 20? Uh, well, uh, the reason why I'm putting this here is because it's a game that I never expected to really enjoy because I don't really play a lot of driving games, at least not this kind of driving games. I kind of stick to the Mario Karts and the Crash team racing games, you know, kind of arcade racing games. Uh, so uh, more, well, realistic is a weird word to say about Burnout. If you know anything about Burnout, it's hardly realistic, but you know, it's a uh, real cars, you know, uh, on, on the real road, you know, uh, and well, Bur Burnout Paradise is not really much of a racing game. It is a racing game because, you know, it has cars, you can race in it, but it's more like an open world game with racing elements, uh, which is very interesting. Like, you can just drive around, you know, Paradise City for as long as you want just messing around, driving around, doing stunts, doing crazy things, crashing into things. That's kind of what Burnout is about and putting it in an open world was amazing. And it was a game that I uh, played uh, during a summer uh, on the PS3. Um, you know, as you can see it's been remastered here uh, on PS4. I haven't played the remaster but it's always a game I've been, I wanted to go back to because I really enjoyed it and, uh, you know, it's, it's just a game you can chill out, play, drive around, mess around, and, you know, I, I got everything in the game pretty much. I did all the billboards, I did all the secret stuff, all the missions, like, it's just fun to play and it's a game that I look back on and I was like, man, that was a really good, enjoyable time I played in the summer, I was like, I had no expectations, I played it, I was like, man, this is fun, I, I'm gonna keep playing it, I don't play these kind of games, but I was like, hey, this is very fun, like, I, I don't know when I played it, like, 20, 2011, 2012, maybe, I don't know, maybe <laughs> maybe earlier than that, like, it was like, on PS3, and, you know, I got it on, I think they had it on the PS Plus service, that's why I played it, because it's not a game I would normally play otherwise, but I, I, I played it, I enjoyed it, it's, it's great. Uh... We're gonna, gonna, I shouldn't, I have 20 games to go through, so I'm gonna try to do it fast, but I still wanna give all my thoughts as I can here. So, the next one is Heavy Rain, yes, a uh, very divisive game, uh, but again, it's, it's also personal, like, uh, 
you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> should I go through the pictures? Should I just stick to one? I don't know, but... Uh, anyway, yeah, it's a it's a, another personal pick, uh, and the reason why it's here is not necessarily because it's the best written game of all time. There's issues, definitely. I when I look back on it, I, 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 and I've seen playthroughs, and yeah, it has issues. But when I played it, it was such a different game. Like it, it really taught me that games could provide a story in a different kind of way that I never seen before and and while a lot of it has been done before uh, it also it also provided something interesting and new to the world of uh, story based video games and never seen anything like it and and while not all the games by uh, Quantum Dream Quantum Dream I don't remember the name maybe it says somewhere around here but anyway um, yeah, not all been, all been great. I did enjoy the latest game, Detroit Become Human. Uh, still has issues, <laughs> uh, but but a lot of it is uh, it's really that I played it and it was like opened my eye to story based narratives. Like I wasn't really that into you know, I would say adult content at the time. Like I played it when I was like I don't know, thirteen or fourteen. I was still like. Mostly I played kiddie games, I guess you can say. Like, I t didn't really explore narrative-based games that much. So when I played this, I was like... I, I got I got the game, I got the, you know, the origami figure. I was like, wow, this looks neat. I'm gonna, gonna make this thing and uh, put it up. And I don't know if I still have it. I probably don't. But I used to have it on my shelf or something like that. Like, it was like... Getting that was, was kind of neat. And, you know, it was in the... In the box, so that was like also a memory about it. Like, and then I played it. I was like sucked in. Didn't read anything. Didn't see any spoilers. I didn't know anything going into it. Like, at all, pretty much. Like, I was like, I I wanted to to figure out what the hell this was all about. And I think in the end it was worth it. Like, not knowing anything. And if you don't know anything about it, still you haven't still played it. Don't know the, the major spoilers, anything like that. Uh, yeah. Um. It's a game I suggest you play, uh, even though it may not be up to your taste, because there's still something interesting and enjoyable about it. And well, if if not, you can laugh at how silly it can be sometimes, because it can. Uh, but yeah, the branching paths, the multiple endings, very interesting story to me personally. I, f I felt like it was like the way they told it, and all the characters were interesting and memorable, and and yeah, all right. So here's a uh, here's a game I wasn't sure about putting on a list. Uh, can't spell. The Outer Worlds, a very new game compared to the most of the games on the list. I I, I, I didn't really want to put this here yet because it's so new and I didn't know if I truly enjoyed it. But I did finish the game and did everything in it, and I was like, this is really what I wanted from. Fallout for a while, like, um, you know, it's made by the people who made New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas, uh, Obsidian, and, uh, and well, the, the whole world of the Outer Worlds, I guess, <laughs> is, is so inspired and original, and y you never really want to leave the world. You want to fully explore everything, and it never feels like you're done after you have explored the world. Like, where is there a secret little thing uh, that I didn't see as a character I didn't speak to, something like that? You want to explore everything. At least that's what happened to me, and I was like, this is exactly what I want from a Fallout like experience. And the gameplay is good, uh, the writing and voice acting is just excellent. Like, it's you know, if if that failed, it would just fall flat for me because that's why I play the Fallout games. And yeah, um, so the game, you know, the way the, the time it came out, you know, it was like, uh, you know, a lot of people really didn't know what to expect from it because, well, the trailers may look like it was like kind of clunky, a little bit outdated. Some of the gra graphics look kind of weird, a little old, and not up to date. 
So at least that's what what I experienced. And after playing it, it's like that 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 was just all laid to rest. It was like the graphics looked inspired and beautiful and lush and colorful. Like you can see in the screenshots. Like look at the no, oh, that's a low res screenshot. But anyway, yeah, you can see the the what do you call that? The star, not the stars. Like you know what that thing. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's beautiful. It, it's great. The story, the, the writing, everything is great. And eventually, I'm gonna probably replay it because the way I played was, uh, you know, in a manner that uh, I, 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 when I play these kind of games, I kind of tend to lean towards being a goody two shoes and kind of being morally correct and all that. And it's definitely a game that can. De- change a lot it seems if you choose another path like that's what it seems like and yeah it's it's you know the length people have said is not that long I disagree I played for 40 hours on my first playthrough and yeah (laughs) while I got everything you know it's like still even if you just do some of the quests side quests like and the main quest it's still like 10 to 20 hours long if you just you know don't want to do everything but if you do want to do anything you can get a lot lot longer if you like explore everything like I did when I played it because I really wanted to explore everything that's how I play these games you know and yeah uh, unsure, unsure how if this should be on the top 20 because it's so new and I don't know but it's definitely an enjoyable game and that's why it's here uh, and I'm talking for a while. This is gonna take a while, huh? Probably not gonna do the honorable mentions and whatnot. Maybe I'm gonna just go out them quickly, just say which ones they are. I don't know. Maybe I'll do another video where I uh, talk more about it. So, Dishonored 2. Uh, so, this game and Dishonored 1 in general were games I that I fell in love with when I saw the world and. And and the gameplay of the stealth and the 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 moves you can get the the ways you can explore and the ways you uh, can take down enemies like you can get through the game pretty much without being seen you know um, and yeah the world is so interesting and depressingly dark and grim and and what do you say uh, what's the word like uh, that's that uh, old uh, industrial English, you know, 1800s vibe thing going on. But it's like in, in its own kind of world. That's it's it's realized. It's you know everything. And there's one or two. Uh, I I could really pick either one, but I think that the one or two is more polished than the one one in some ways. Uh, and I think, think that it has some more interesting mechanics here and there, you know. Uh, though it is isn't the most innovative, I suppose, compared to the first one. Like the first one had a had its own style. Number two was more like more of the same, but better, I guess. So, you know, you can pick either one. Um, and yeah, a thing about this game that I've always wanted to do was get the Mark of the Outsider. Uh, which I can Google that. Uh, here we go. The Mark of the Outsider. It, it's something, yeah, I've wanted to get as a tattoo. I've, I have no tattoos, uh, but if I, uh, if I ever were to get one, it would probably be this, because it's not, you know, it's not like an explicit thing. You can, like, say, hey, this is a video game thing, but it's also when you know it's a video game thing, it's like, oh, hey, that's cool, you have that. Like, And yeah, it, it's a cool sign. I like the game. And yeah, but you know, uh, as a two is a commitment, and I don't know. It's simple, you know. It wouldn't take long to really get get on, because I know that tattoos can take a while to to you know make, and I don't know if I would be able to take it, because I don't know the pain of it. Like, but anyway, that's just another thing that like I've always been like, hey, I, I if I were to get a tattoo, I would probably get this first. Like, it's simple, it's easy, and yeah, it's I like the game. It's it's a unique world, and yeah. Next is Chrono Trigger, and I spelled it wrong. So Chrono Trigger 
it's a game I actually played on the DS. I played the DS version, which may or may not be the best version, depending on who you ask. Uh, this seems to be the PC version or something, because that's not how it looks, but... Yeah, uh, Chrono Trigger, well-known game, well-known for being one of the best RPGs of all time. At least, probably the best RPG on the SNES, unless maybe you're more of the Earthbound kind of person who plays those kind of games. But yeah, Chrono Trigger is a game I played on the DS. I heard a lot about it, and I was like, I gotta pick this up eventually, and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna play this, and yeah, I really enjoy it. It's the... Uh, you know, I don't play a lot of RPG, so playing something like this was like, man, this is like really solid. The writing is solid, the world is interesting and well put together, and uh, the combat is has a unique style to it that's unlike most of oh gosh, RPGs, excuse me. Um, and yeah, it's just very solid made. Um, maybe I should have put this a little bit higher. I don't know how... It's been a while since I played it, and... I feel like I don't remember a whole lot about it really, like I remember certain points, you know, but I couldn't really describe the plot all that much to you, honestly. Like, it's been a while since I played it, so maybe it shouldn't have been on the list, maybe it should have been a little higher up, but, you know, still in the top 20, like, the top, the, the 10 to 20s are a little bit like, okay, these are just kind of games where I'm like, I really want to put this on the list, but I don't know where exactly, so it's kind of mismatched, but anyway. That's all I really have to say about that, because I, <laughs> I need to get through these, so... Last of Us, or The Last of Us, I guess, but whatever. Yeah, uh... The Last of Us is... Really... What you would describe as a triple A blockbuster success story, like, it's... You know, it, it, it does everything... That, for the medium, that it, it needs to do to... Uh, push it forward, basically, like... The story, the way it's told, the the voice acting and the world is, you know, it's um, what do you say? It's it's made by people who know how to make a video game, and how to make a story based game that that blend the, you know, the traditional movie like experience with a video game. Uh, and, and you can really mess that up easily. And Naughty Dog, you know know from their experience with Uncharted and you know games in the past that while not really very story based they'd have some story here and there you know and had some flavor and all that but you know under PS3 they really start to shine through with great games and constantly just pushing the medium forward pushing the graphics forward pushing anything forward like and the gameplay and the stealthing and the action, it, it combines it all into a, a, a an experience that's like just so solid and I feel like you will always remember this game after you play it. Like there, there's so many points that's like, oh man, I remember this, I remember that, I remember this. And yeah, uh, it, it's, it's solid, you know, the part two is coming out soon and I'm like, Man, this 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 just looks even better. Like, how can they improve on something that's so masterful already? Like, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, part two is gonna be even better. Yeah, I I don't know how they can mess it up. It, you know, Naughty Dog really knowing what they're doing. So yeah, that's a great game. Uh, so gonna throw back to the Super Nintendo again. Super Mario World, yes. Um, so Super Mario World is a game again that I have a lot of personal experience with because what I really started when I really started making videos on YouTube it was a long time ago when in 2008 or 9 or something like that like that's kind of when I started and when I you know I was like let's playing on the internet was like a thing it just started becoming a, a thing I was like I saw some people play the games you know and I saw Super Mario World which was you know, a game I didn't really know much about at the time. I was like, you know, I was like 12 or 13, you know, I'm not... I don't, didn't really play retro games at the time and hadn't really tried them much. Like, there were a few on the Game Boy Advance and whatnot. Like, I played Yoshi's Island and I played uh, Donkey Kong Country and, you know, there were some ports and whatnot and I maybe have emulated some games before, like 
here and there, but then I, then Super Mario World, I saw Let's Plays of the game, I saw ROM hacks of the game mostly, like people modifying the game, you know, that's mainly what I was like, you can do this? You can make a whole new game from this? And I was like, huh, that's like, you can really change everything about the game and you know, I, I played the game eventually on my own, you know, just the normal game, and I was like, man, this is really fun, like, this is a good game, this is really solidly made, everything is like, a step up from what I, you know, I played the Super Mario Brothers games before, you know, the NES games, and I was like, eh, yeah, okay, but Super Mario World always felt better in every way to me, you know, the jumping, the the movement, the spin jumps you can do, the flying, you know, just... It all worked so much better, in my opinion. Um, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, mostly mostly the reason is ROM hacks and this playing in general. That's really why I, what it got me into YouTube and making videos. And then, you know, eventually I stopped making videos and I started again. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I'm gonna eventually play a Mario hack because it's really something I really really enjoy. I still watch Mario hacks being played here and there, you know. You know, not as the uh, Super Mario Mega is a thing, which wasn't a thing when when I started watching the these videos. Um, which also changed, you know, uh, it also, you know, expanded the whole ROM hacking and game making community that happened because of Super Mario World. Like, Super Mario World is probably the game most people uh, uh, hack and, you know, modify and make their own. Like, uh, and to see it finally becoming a thing in Super Mario Maker was like, wow, they're really doing this, huh? And while, while it's def definitely a different experience uh, in Mario Maker, Super Mario World and will always like have a certain charm to it and it's just solid um, perhaps not the most interesting game uh, now but at the time it was definitely like the next step for Mario and you still see influences of Super Mario World everywhere in modern Mario games you know uh, you know one of the things is Yoshi first of all is a playable character in almost in every Mario game nowadays like at least somewhat um, and yeah like a lot of the enemies, a lot of the worlds, the backgrounds, you know, you see them everywhere. And so my world is just solidly made, solid game. And yeah. Uh, okay, man, I'm just gonna be a long video. Are we in the blind forest? So this is a game I've kind of wanted to play on the channel. Uh, like I played Hollow Knight on the channel and. Well, it's gonna come up eventually in, in this list, you'll see. But anyway, Are We Under Blind Forest is a game I played before Hollow Knight, and uh, while the games are pretty different, uh, they're still metaraneous. Um, and yeah, Are We Under Blind, Blind Forest is just beautiful to look at. Like, well, when my stupid ass browser will load the images. There we go. You can see all the colors and everything, and it's more platforming based and than uh, most Metroidvanias, I would say, because the combat in the game is, is definitely where it lacks. Like, if you have played the game, the combat is there, it exists, but, you know, it's really nothing. You press a button and you beat the enemy. That's it. You don't have to really think about it. <laughs> but the world is beautiful, it's lush, it's colorful, the platforming and the gameplay in general is sol so solid and so creative and it's really just, you know, a great exploration and a great, you know, world. And I'm I'm looking so much forward to the next game. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, uh, Ori and the uh, Will of the Wisps, I think. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The next game is coming out pretty soon, actually. Like, I think in February. Maybe? I don't know. But it's coming out soon, and yeah, uh, it, it's a gorgeous game, and the next game, I hope hope it's gonna improve a lot of the small missteps here and there, because it has some issues here and there, like the combat, for instance, and yeah, but the world is definitely worth exploring. It's a game that's 
I don't know how well known it is. It's sort of well known, but not that well known. I really think you should play it if you get the chance, because it really is just fantastic in a lot of ways. And now for something completely different. Bloodborne. So, this is a game I played in 2018, late 2018, and, uh, you know, Bloodborne and Dark Souls in general were not games I really played much of, because I was like, I couldn't really ever get into them, I felt the way they were structured and the combat and the difficulty was a turn off in a lot of ways, so I never really played them. So eventually I, I played it because it was on PlayStation Plus and I was like, okay, I'm gonna check this out eventually. Uh, I played it for a bit and I was like, ah, it's still, still not, I don't know about this. Then I put it down, then I picked it up again and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna really try. I'm gonna try to get through it and I was like, man, this is really tough. I keep dying, I keep dying, I keep dying. Eventually I didn't die. Eventually I found, hey, there's a path here you can unlock. Okay, this makes it easier. Oh, hey, there's a thing here I can get. This makes this easier. And I was like, okay, I get it, okay. That there's more to it than this. You you, you don't just mash the button, you gotta you gotta time, you gotta dodge, you gotta do everything, you know. And and eventually I beat the first boss, I was like, okay, hey, this is possible, I can make it make it through it. And so I did. Like I kept doing it, kept doing it, I was like, man, this is tough, this is really hard, like but eventually I was like, I'm at the final boss, I'm like, holy crap, I'm actually here, I'm actually beating the game. And yeah, I did beat the game, and now I can say I've beaten Bloodborne, and that really sparked my interest in other uh, Soul Slikes, and I've been trying to play some Soul Slikes, like I played uh, Darksiders 3, I finished that. That was also a pretty tough game, not as tough as Bloodborne, which is like, you know, uh, Darksiders 3 is like a mix between a beat em up and a Soul Slike, it's kind of weird. It's not the best game, but it's not the worst game. It's like, eh, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, and there's a few others I've played. Uh, I haven't played a lot of them. A lot of them I've kind of looked at and I was like, if I really want to play a game like this, I need to really find the one that I enjoy the most because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time with it and then it sucks. Um, so a game I played was Ashen. Uh, it's just... I don't know if you know about this game. It's uh, not the well, most well-known game, I think. Uh, but, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's an open world-ish kind of thing, like, more more than most uh, Dark Souls-like games, you know? Um, it was an interesting, it was an interesting game, but it just felt like, uh, it didn't really innovate that much. Besides an open world, there's not much else that it really does that I really felt was interesting. Uh, it, it's a game that, you know, looks interesting in the world, like, people don't have any faces and whatnot, and, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> and there's some interesting bosses and enemies to fight, but, yeah. Um, and I'm playing Neo. Is that right? Neo? Nio? I think that's it. I'm playing Neo now. It's on PS Plus as well, so that's why I'm playing. Um, haven't gotten very far, but... It does seem like it'd be a pretty solid game, uh, and yeah, I, I I own Dark Souls and I may play it eventually, but you know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, Bloodborne, interesting, interesting, interesting world. I guess we talk about the game world. Like the world is so dark and you know gory and ugly and nasty looking, and it has certain uh, weirdness factor to it. That's like. You never know what to expect. You never know if if the next guy is gonna be just a humanoid guy or if it's gonna be a giant tentacle monster thing. You know, that's what Bloodborne is like. And yeah, uh, it, 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 it's it's definitely a game that exp it opened my world to wanting to play those kind of games. And yeah, it, the game itself is fascinating and the story in the game is like weird and dark and creepy and yeah all right next one uh oh, super Mario. that's not a game super mario that's right <laughs> yeah super mario uh again to taking a different uh, departure here so i haven't played a lot of the paper mario games i've never played the first one or the gamecube one i only played this one and the one on the the DS, yeah, I know. 
But, um... You know, eventually I want to play those games, because I, I, I do enjoy the Mario and Luigi games, because they're kind of similar, but not really, like... You know, I don't know. But, um... Super Paper Mario was a game I just, you know, played because I, 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 it was a different kind of game. I, I think I knew about Paper Mario series before this, but when I played this game, I was like, man, this is an interesting concept. You can change the world from 2D to 3D, like... Yeah, it's like, huh, that's an interesting gimmick, and the, the worlds this game explores are, like, so unique and different from each other, and, like, there's different characters, the humor is great, the uh, writing is quite, quite different from other Mario games, you know? Um, the villains, uh, the characters are memorable, and the, the unique gameplay and everything, you know? It has issues, um, you know, uh, I guess it's, you know, it's not the hardest game in the world, it's like pretty pedestrian, you know, compared to most Mario RPGs, which is not, it's not an RPG, it's like more of a traditional Mario game, but with some RPG elements, you know, and that's like, not everybody's cup of tea, a lot of people don't like this game, and while personally I enjoy this game a lot, because it's so fun and different, um, it is, you know, uh, definitely a game that uh, a lot of people, you know, may enjoy. It's, it's divisive, and again, you know, the top the t 10 to 20s are a little bit, like, just randomly ordered. I may put this a bit higher than this, actually. I don't know, but it's definitely a game I really enjoyed, and I think you should play if you get the chance. Uh, Alright, next is Borderlands 2. So, this is again a game that's kind of divisive in a lot of ways, because it can be considered a looter shooter, just kill all the guys, get the loot. That isn't, it's, it's not a deep game, really. It's, you just shoot guys, you run around, you get guns, you do all kinds of things, but it, 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 it is also so, the world is so interesting and the, the the humor, while some people find it a little bit like, eh, when I when this the humor in this game hits, it's, it's like it's just hilarious. It's just like so crazy, so weird, so wild, and the world and characters in it are like interesting, and you know you can find things like this giant crap thing. I don't know what it is. Even it's like. It, it it's a huge game. It has so many deal, so much DLC and interesting things going on. And the main story may not be amazing, but definitely something that is amazing, you know, is 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 handsome Jack as a villain and character and yeah, one of the best video game villains, pretty much I would say. And yeah, you got Moxie here. You see Lilith's, uh Angel, a lot of characters in here. Maya, I think is he from one or two? I don't remember. But, um, you know, Tiny Tina, uh, freaking everybody in the game is like, you know, m memorable and interesting and unique and funny and yeah, the the gameplay may be sort of simple, but there are missions that differ and the boss battles are all are interesting and you know, exploration and the world is fun to me, and yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, Alright, I gotta get foodies, man. <laughs> I've been here for a while. God of War and 2018, because, yeah. He named it God of War, but I, I guess God of War 4? I don't know. But anyway, God of War on PS4. Jesus. Yeah, this game is amazing. It's just... One of the best uh, games on the PS4, probably, I would say. Is it my favorite on PS4? I don't know. Maybe? Uh, I don't have any others here, but... Yeah. It, it may be the best PS4 exclusive, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> definitely very enjoyable. The, the gameplay... You know, I played all, all the other God of War games, and... Eventually I found that the gameplay was just like, 
okay, I just kind of mash buttons for a while. Like, sure, on on higher difficulties, you can find more chance in the games, but I always found that the God of War games were just like mostly button matches and while they were fun, you know, um, and definitely some some of the time it wasn't just button matching, you couldn't just button match, but it really felt like a lot of the same. And while while the walls are definitely all, you know, each game is has things to it that's like, oh man, I remember, remember this and this and this, you know, God of War 3 on the PS3 uh, was definitely the best God of War up, up until that point because it felt like a step in a diff not a different direction but like definitely a game that was like trying to improve on what they had done before so God of War on the PS4 changed a lot you know gameplay is completely different it's not as button mesh you, you know you gotta f it's more I wouldn't say it's like a Dark Souls game, but it's more like its own kind of thing. Like, I feel like a lot of games are gonna probably try to be God of War from now on. Like, I've I kind of seen that with uh, Assassin's Creed a little bit. Like, has a has a little bit of God of War feel to it in the newer games, which I don't know. <laughs> like, this game is from 2018, so I don't know if that really is true, or if it's just a coincidence that they're kind of the same, but. I don't know. Uh, still, uh, what God of War provided was a character and story that was actually really good. Like, I didn't feel much about the story in the other God of War games. I felt it was kind of kind of mediocre, honestly. Like, I didn't really feel anything for Kratos. He was not a character. He was just a guy who killed things. But in the new God of War, you have. Uh, you have a a character that's more what do you say grounded and like understands what he who he is. Is he's uh, hesitant? He's uh, more thoughtful and and while he still still has to deal with you know having to kill everything in his path, he's like understands that it's necessary, not just something for his own gain. And yeah, um, the characters uh, of Atreus, I think, is that his name? Atreus? I think that's his name. Um, uh, the boy. <laughs> boy. That's pretty much what Kratos calls him all the time, so yeah. That's why I can't remember it, I guess. Uh, you know, the, the relationship is great. Um, the world is huge and has so much to explore, and it's like. Again, it's kind of an open world, but not. Um, and yeah, people have pointed out some issues. Like, uh, some people don't like the combat a little bit. Like, it's, I feel feel like the combat is, is not that great. You know, you are behind Kratos, so you don't can't see a lot. I never find that to be much of an issue. Um, personally, I just I enjoyed the combat. I and eventually I was like. I got the combat down, I was like, really good, I beat all the Valkyries and all that, which was very tough. The game is actually very tough, even, you know, just, yeah, uh, uh, what do you say, even though it's just, you know, what am I trying to say? Jesus. Um, even though I'm, I, I don't think, I don't know if there's difficulty levels or what, but, I don't think I played it on the hardest or anything, I just played it on normal or whatever, so it was still a pretty tough game even then, like. Um What else was the criticism? Uh there's something else I wanted to say. I don't know, but yeah, there's some issues. Oh oh uh the 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 there aren't a lot of variety in the in the bad guys. I can see it, yeah. I never find it to be much of an issue. I think that maybe it's intentional because all enemies are, are are different from each other, so you gotta like learn. Okay, this guy, you gotta beat him this way. You gotta avoid this thing. He does this. He jumps up. He flies. He, you know, everything. So do you wanna to, to make sure it isn't too, you know, don't gotta memorize all the enemies that much. Like that, that was never never an issue. So that's I think that's probably intentional that you didn't have a lot of variety. 
Still though, I wish there was more variety in boss battles, more variety in enemies. I can see that, but not not a huge deal for me because it still has so much more to the world of God of War that the have more puzzles, have more world building, a better world, a more interesting world to me than you know. It's it's a Nordic world. It's not a Greek world, which you know, Greek and Nordic are both great locations. Uh, and has a lot of, you know, interesting things you can do with it, but I like this world better for God of War and Kratos, because I feel like he's, uh, he's he's in a world he doesn't know much about, so he has to learn from, you know, from Atreus and from everybody, and yeah, that's more interesting to me, but anyway. Great game, solid game, great writing, great story, great world, gameplay, everything, you know. Probably maybe should be higher honestly. I don't know. <laughs> it's a game I really enjoyed and again it's a pretty new game so again so maybe that's why I chose to put it on a nine. Uh so next is Grand Theft Auto five. Again uh improves on the other oh, it's sort of, uh, I wanted some screens there we go. Um yeah, uh improves on the previous Grand Theft Auto games a lot, like it's the most it's the game that changed Grand Theft Auto into something very different, I feel like. It's st still, st still, you know, you can still see this Grand Theft Auto game. But, uh, you know, it, it, it changed the way it tells the story. Uh, and, and and the story in this game is just fantastic. I, I It's funny all the time. It's, you know, it's, it, it's actually interesting and... You know, you actually kind of feel for the characters, even though it's so ridiculous uh, a lot of the time. Um, the idea of having three characters to pick from uh, here, you can see, you, you know, Grand Theft Auto Five. I don't need to explain it. It's it's what is it? The most profitable game of all time, I think. So you know the game. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Five, fantastic, great, great, great fun to just. Drive around, mess around, you know, you know Grand Theft Auto. You you, you played it. it. It's a game you just mess around in. That's a huge world with so many missions, so many characters to find. You know the the strangers. You know, was a uh, think they didn't introduce that in no that was in Red Dead One I think so. Uh, yeah, they had strangers like in Red Dead. Uh, in this game, which was like fun to just find random people and it's like. Hey, here's a mission, and here's a random person, and you may not see them ever again. Like that was a fun f little thing to do, and and you know it's funny, it's huge, it's you know still has an online community, which I'm um, haven't played much of the online. Uh, I played a little bit when I got the game on PS3, but didn't play it since. But you know the online has grown and grown and grown. I don't know how huge it is now, but it's probably even bigger than the real game. You know. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's it's solid, it's great, it's fun, you know, it's GTA, which, you know, if you're not into that kind of gameplay, you know, the open world shoot guys, you know, one hour guys, like, it, it's pretty simple still, it's, you know, it isn't the most innovative GTA game in that regard, more in the story department, I would say, but yeah. Uh, next, I've been talking for way too long, well, we are almost done, I guess. <laughs> So, Breath of the Wild, it's, gonna, it's easy to type this, yeah, uh, let's not sell no Breath of the Wild, so, this game <laughs> took a long time to complete, I played this game for over a year pretty much, because I just played it every once in a while, so, uh, when I finally got to complete, I was like, man, I can't believe I have all the hearts, I have all the gear, I have everything I need. I'm way too overpowered to beat this game. I should have beat this game a long time ago, but yeah, I explored as much as I could of this game. I explored every little corner, got pretty much every quest. There's only a few quests I didn't get because that was felt like they were a little bit tedious to do and didn't really have any reward to them, so I didn't play them. That's, that's an issue about the game. Some of the quests kind of pointless. You don't get a whole lot from them. They're not very interesting. It's mostly fetch quests, you know. But when this game shines, it's just running around, exploring the world, 
messing around, finding secrets, finding the ch the chambers. What do you call them? Um, uh, these things. Uh, I don't know what they call. It. I forgot. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, doing these puzzle areas, uh, finding you know the story. Eh, you know, it's Zelda story. It's not. You know. Zelda is is, is kind of weird because the story can both be one of the best things about the Zelda games, but also one of the like okay, it's just you know it's there, so it's it's a little bit of a mix to me. Um, but yeah, Breath of the Wild is, is is funny. The writing when when you meet characters and talk to them is funny and interesting, and and the world is huge and expansive, and it's always something new to find. And yeah. Uh, it's a solid game, it's very big, <laughs> took a while to beat and you may get tired of it after a while, but even even you know after I don't know how long I played it, like <gasps> almost one one hundred and twenty hours I think, or something like that. I I don't remember what my time is, but it's definitely a big game. And I'm not even done finding all the chain bars or whatnot, but I don't know, maybe I'm gonna do it at one point, but yeah, it's um it's a great game, well made, you know, beautiful to look at, even, even you know, with the sacrifice of, you know, the Switch being not the most up to date, it still looks pr as pretty as, you know, any game of this generation really, like, they really pulled everything they could out of the Switch and, yeah, uh, it's on the Wii U, yeah, sure, <laughs> don't know what that game is like on the Wii U, but, yeah, uh, Great game, fantastic uh, in a lot of regards, and definitely worth playing if you have to switch. You know, y you already have it, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Portal Two, which is an interesting game. I'm not sure how if I should put this uh, low on the list. I think maybe because I think maybe I enjoy some of the games I talked about here more than this game, because well, Portal One is. You know, it's its own thing that's like so unique and different, and has its own. You know, the way it innovated with the portal mechanic is just crazy. If you know anything about it, it's like it took so long to make, and it's like, yeah. But you know, Portal One was an experiment, and while writing that game was funny, you know, it was it, it existed to be you know. Just okay. Here's here's a here's a game with some puzzles. Go to the next room, next room, next room. Portal Two felt like an actual game. It felt like they wanted hey, so we had Portal. Now how do we make it more like a you know a Half Life game where there's a story and a world and everything? Like look at this. Like this was nothing like Portal One. You know with. It was very clean, Portal 1, and Portal 2 was a messed up world with, you know, puzzles that were, you know, kind of messed up and not what you what was originally intended, but, you know, what you had to now find out, okay, well, this is uh, a completely, um, you know, you, you, you had to find out another way because here's the way that was it was recently done but the world is broken and you gotta find another way which was interesting and the humor again even better than the first game honestly you know uh freaking what's his name um jackson no what's his name shoot uh not jackson what's his name shoot i forgot his name the the the, the guy uh, maybe if I type character, ah, I'm so bad with character names, um, let's see here, uh, Cave Johnson, that's right, Cave Johnson is fantastic, he's incredibly funny, Weedley is funny, Gladys of course is funny, uh, everybody's just funny and, and interesting in the world and the characters and, you know, for a game that's a puzzle game focused thing, you you wouldn't think it could actually have a world that's you know worth exploring and characters that's w worth going into depth with you know 
but it's funny, it's interesting, it has a great world. It's a game I've wanted to be play for a long time because when I played it the first time I was like, this is so funny, so great, the puzzles are so interesting, like I, I really enjoyed it and yeah. Um, Portal 2 is not a game I expected to be on my top 10 list and that's why it's on the top 10 list I guess. Next is Celeste. I don't know if I need to type. Okay, yeah, Google knows. Um, yeah, Celeste. Uh, also a pretty recent game, I guess. Um, I think 2018, maybe? I don't know. But uh, yeah, Celeste is, uh, you know, very popular game, I suppose, nowadays, I think. Um, it's definitely an indie darling. It's uh, a game that's colorful and interesting story-wise and all of that you know it, it's great on its own like story and and world is great on its own but what what makes this game really good to me is the gameplay it, even though the world and the story is great and interesting and different from you know other games of this sort you know 2d pixely platformer things added a story that was deep and interesting and had great characters and like um what what made this game so great is the is the gameplay it, it's so solid it's perfect in almost every regard in the level design in the gameplay in the innovative ways the you know have new mechanics all the time you always do something different you know and yeah it's it, it's beautiful it's great it's Charming, it can be funny sometimes, uh, but it can also be, you know, uh, deep and, you know, uh, what do you say, um, atmospheric and, uh, not atmospheric, but like, I don't know, but, you know, uh, it, yeah, it's uh, definitely a game that's, um, that, that's just very, very solidly made and I, I, you know, it got chapter 9 recently, uh, for free, you know. I wish they would continue making things for this game forever, honestly. Like, I could play this game forever, but I get it. You know, chapter 9 was the, was the finale, uh, you know, and they wanted to move on, and I get it. <laughs> but I would play levels of this game forever. And I think, you know, that's fan-made levels, I guess. You know, I didn't turn off my sound on my phone. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a game I play forever. Um, next is The Witcher 3. So, this game is pretty similar, I would say, to Breath of the Wild in a lot of regards. Like, I feel like they definitely took inspiration from this game when making Breath of the Wild, like, and maybe Skyrim and whatnot, but, uh, in ter I like uh, the Witcher 3 better than I like uh, Breath of the Wild, obviously, since it's number 4 on the list, but, um, you know, even then, the, the Witcher 3 has issues, and mainly it's the combat. The combat is, that it's okay, it's okay. You know, it's not as bad as people said when I went into the game, I was like, ugh, the combat is in this game is just gonna be a train wreck. When you know what you're doing in the game, and you just run around, you know, dodge attacks, attack, attack, use magic, attack, attack, dodge, you know. It, it works. It's not great, but it works. And, yeah. But, the, what makes this game so fantastic is the story, the characters, the quests, the world is fully realized. It has cr crazy scenarios, like you can see what the hell is going on here. Um, can you find some monsters? Uh, you know, we got crazy monsters, crazy, you know, scenarios, quests, uh, great writing, great storytelling, great everything, you know. That's what makes this, and it's like so huge. There's always something new to explore and find, and I try to get as much of the things this game as I can, but it's like, Oh, it's exhausting to try to get everything in this game. Like, there's so much to find. So many uh, chests in the water. 
that took a while to find and get all those. That was a nightmare. But I did it because I don't know. I I really just liked the game so much. I was like, I it's worth actually diving down and getting these chests because there may be something interesting in them. Like there may be a a new armor piece that I really like or want. Uh, there may be something interesting in them. Yeah, and the RPG elements in this game, you know, uh, while the gameplay, I don't, I never found it to be too difficult. You know, I was playing, I guess, a normal again. Like that's what I typically do. So, um, you know, when when I was like, okay, maybe I should turn the difficulty up and see what it was like. I was like, oh, I'm getting crushed all the time. This is too hard. Like, there's definitely RPG elements that, you know, if you want to want the game to be hard and difficult and a real RPG experience, you, you can do that. But I played it and I was like, you know, didn't really, you know, I didn't think much about the RPG elements, you know, I was like, okay, well, I have this armor, I have these uh, potions, I'm just gonna keep using these and, you know, get these, uh, what did you call again? Not, not augments, that's something different, like, mutations? Yeah, mutations. Um, the mutations and there's like so many different mutations you can get and like make the game so different and very very involved uh, but you know it's 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 very overwhelming at first the game that's for sure but eventually you learn everything about the game you learn how the game works you learn how mutations work um, and yeah it's 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 not, you know, I have never played the Witcher games before this, so I was like, didn't know what to expect. But then I played this game, I was like, I get it. <laughs> I get why people like this series, I get why people enjoy it. And yeah, it's, uh, you know, the TV series on, on Netflix came out, and uh, I've been watching that a little bit. Uh, I haven't gotten very far, but yeah, uh, you know, and, and maybe I'll read the books, I don't know, but... <laughs> Like, I don't read a lot of books, but definitely something, a world that's more, maybe more interesting to me, honestly, than I think Game of Thrones and all that is, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say, because um, I haven't played this game, so I don't know that much about the world of The Witcher. But yeah. Um, fantastic game. Next is Fallout 4, and, you know... This is a, a strange thing, because each time I play a Fallout game, I was like, I enjoyed this more than the last one, and now I don't know <laughs> if I should put this one above the other ones. Like, I played Fallout 3, great game, you know, played Fallout New Vegas, amazing game, played Fallout 4, thought it was bloody fantastic, and improved on what the Fallout games were before, you know. Mainly in the gunplay, which was always a mess, honestly, in the Fallout games. You know, Fallout 4 actually made the gunplay actually kind of fun. You know, it was actually legit fun. Maybe not the most deep in the world, but you actually, you know, could actually aim at a guy and kill them without having to <laughs> use vats all the time. You know, you had to, you know, you know, you could just point at a guy and shoot him and, yeah, uh, it... So Fallout 4, why I'm picking this up above the other ones is mainly because it's the newest one that I enjoyed. Because <laughs> I each time that a new Fallout game comes out, I'm like, I enjoyed more than the last one. And I don't know if that's... I could really put any of them here, I honestly, I think. Well, I don't know. I, I feel like Fallout 3 is a little bit too, you know, messy and ugly nowadays. Uh... I look back at that game and I'm like, ugh, it's not the most interesting looking game in the world. New Vegas, New Vegas, um, you know, New Vegas is uh, more of that, but the writing of the game is better, I think, in New Vegas, and the world is more interesting in New Vegas, honestly. Uh, but New Vegas has a lot of other problems, you know. Uh, but Fallout 4, you know, it pushed the graphics to be, well, I wouldn't say amazing, but definitely a lot better, you know. You can tell what things are more clearly, you know, it looks solid, you know. And, 
you know, it has crazy <laughs> monsters again. Like, you know, I fought out of out of worlds here before, which, you know, the reason why I have played and enjoyed the outer world so much is because of Fallout. You know, uh, if Fallout didn't exist, outer worlds wouldn't exist, and you know, that's why I love the Fallout universe so much because it's so interesting and so funny and again deep. Like, I could I say these things for most of the games because. It's what I, what I enjoy about these kind of games it, it, that you have a fully realized world and you can go everywhere, you can explore everything, you can, you know, do whatever kind of build you want. You can be stealthy, you can, you know, use heavy weapons, you can use melee, I don't know, but like, you know, you can do all whatever you want and, you know, it's the. the, the, the one of the things also is that I think that a lot of the story in the previous Fallout games I don't remember all that much. Some of them I can like remember a little bit, but still in Fallout 4 there's like so many quests and companion quests. It, it, definitely companion quests are one of the best things in the game. Um, yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to say. Um. Yeah, the, the, the quests and the story in Fallout 4 is probably my favorite. I have to go back and play the other games though, because it's hard to say. I enjoy, enjoy all of them for different reasons. I enjoy the world, I enjoy exploring everything, finding terminals and notes and all that kind of stuff. Like, just figuring out, okay, what happened here? Why is this building destroyed? Uh, why is this... Why was this taking over by radars, you know? Uh, you know, there's a quest that is crazy, you gotta... F I don't know what you gotta do, you gotta go around and collect... Uh, I don't know, heads or something? I don't know. Fallout is weird. <laughs> like, Fallout and, you know, the world is weird, the world is big and expansive and crazy and, you know, there are issues with Fallout 4. I never found it too, too annoying that you know the dialogue trees weren't the same as the one in the previous four games. I enjoyed the way it had more of a mass effect kind of feel to them. They just picked the option, you know. Uh, and you, your character talked, some people didn't like it. I was like, eh, it's fine. Um, I didn't really mind it, it didn't change much to me. Um, you know, uh, you you could build uh, what do you call it? What not workshops, but like uh, homes. I don't know what you call them. Workshops, work homes. You know, locations. So you could you, you could build places, and that was you know, uh, hit and miss for me. That part of the game, I, I always you know went back to the you know the the home and did things in the home because it was you know some of it was you know, useful to you, obviously, you know, you could grow things, you could, you know, get water and food and all that kind of stuff, like, it, it, it didn't feel necessary to the game, but, it, you know, it was a thing that made Fallout 4 different from the other Fallout, I guess, so, and, yeah, uh, and, you know, unfortunately, the next game was Fallout 76, which I played for a while, I was like, you know, it's Fallout, it's not the best, it's not the worst, it's... could I want more characters, I want more story, but there is some story, there is some characters, kind of. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it wanted to do something different, and while I don't approve of the, the business, business practices that Bethesda has done with the game, um, you know, Fallout 76 is still a Fallout game to me, and it still was, uh, you know, it still, you know, had that Fallout fix I needed after Fallout 4, you know, was done and all that I played, and when that came out, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I got it for Christmas, and I was like, okay, well, I wasn't intending to buy this because I didn't, I was like, uh, it's getting bad reviews, everybody hates it, you know, then I played it, I was like, uh, you know, this is not that bad, like, eh, I mean, it has some problems, you know, glitches, 
collection issues, but you know, the gameplay is fine. It's pretty much like Fallout 4, nothing too different there. Um, you know, the world, not the most interesting, you know, definitely worse than Fallout 4, but still has some interesting parts here and there, you know. And, you know, I still think Bethesda can make it a good Fallout game. You just need to figure out, like, what made... What, like, you have to figure out what made Fallout 4 work and what made, you know, uh, Fallout 76 uh, a huge failure in all that we got. Um, because I really think, like, the, the no, they can, they, can, they can still make a game, you know, without Obsidian. They made Fallout 4 without Obsidian. Uh... I don't know what the team looks like at Bethesda that makes these games, but you know, Fallout 4 didn't have have, a, have as many glitches as uh, the previous Fallout games, so uh, that's that was you know at least to me. But I know there was some, but uh, you know, it was definitely a much more improved game. Do you know what? Do the kind of getting to know what they're doing with Fallout in terms of the you know making the world not. A mess all the time because that's definitely a problem with the wild games but yeah uh anyway man i've been going on for an hour almost i think jesus next is hollow knight uh yeah hollow knight is my number two game and number two and number one are definitely games that uh you know uh fighting for the spot of number one because these games are here for different reasons mainly uh hollow knight you know i played this on the channel and you know my feelings probably and what can i say it's the world of hollow knight is just a world i never want to leave i it, it's a beautiful world with great gameplay with great characters and bosses and everything in the game that's so little wrong about these games i can say the only things i can say are kind of bad is maybe the dlc uh of uh god home i think is that what it's called i forgot um you know the dlc of god home you know it's a free dlc but it also feels like it has to be part of the game because that's what the it you know it's put into the game that way where it's like uh, a location in the game and you go there and you like such a huge part of it like it's the biggest challenge but the challenge of that part is like you know I've said that I feel like it's too difficult for too long and you you don't get a lot of rest. I don't know what this unbound thing is like, I gotta look that up later because, yeah, that looks like we need, but anyway, um, but yeah, it's too difficult and too long and too annoying to do that I personally didn't want to do it and I was like, eh, you know, I'm, I'm done with this, you know, not the best note to leave Hollow Knight off with and, you know, I stopped at that part in my series, so, yeah, um, but yeah, everything else is just great, and yeah, I I, I want to move on because I want to talk about why I chose this over Hollow Knight. Uh, Yoshi's Island, and this is maybe a strange choice. Uh, I feel like this game is not on the top ten of many people's lists. Uh, and I, 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 I can see why it may not be for you, because there's a lot of things that this game does that may put people off. Uh, but why I love this game so much is because it's a game I've played so many times that, you know, um, I, I, I keep going back to the game, I'm like, am I going to enjoy this game this time? I played this game maybe six seven times and did 100 percent runs like every time and no i played the game recently on on the switch on the snes thingy um, you can hear my chair um yeah i played on the on the switch and 
I, I played for a while and I was like, okay, I, I remember why I like this game so much and like, it's fun. Do I really want to continue? And then I beat like the first world and I was like, oh, I just beat it, well, first world. Huh. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to continue for a bit. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'm going to do 100% of the first world. And I did. And I was like, this is still enjoyable. And even though I've played this so many times, I'm like, it just is fun to play and 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 the style of the game is so look at it it's like this is on the SNES the the they made this hand drawn style and it's just beautiful to look at even now like uh e even even if you may not like it because it has the thick outline you know it looks kind of weird sometimes like I always found it to be charming in, 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 in a in a stylish cartoony way that's all it's so is that Mario? Yeah. What is this all about? Um is this a DS one maybe? I think I don't know. I but anyway. Um Yeah it, it, what a lot of people may dislike about the game is its focus on you know, the completion aspect of the game. If you don't like finding things and collecting everything it may not be the perfect game for you and I can see that uh, but I always enjoyed the 100% thing of the game because it added a challenge to the game it really needed because the game is not very hard um, even with the 100% it's not particularly super difficult but it still if you if you want to 100% this game it's not gonna be that easy like it, it's it's gonna take a while it's gonna be you know, it's a game where you explore every little part of the level, you go back and forth, you try to find every coin, every, uh, every flower, you know. And getting hit once can end the run, because, you know, you gotta get one, get 30, uh, I don't know, stars, yeah, stars, um, which is like, you know, when you get hit, Mario, you know, flies off in a bubble, and you gotta collect, collect him again, and your timer goes down, and uh, that's also a app part people dislike like Mario being so annoying and flying off and you know uh, it, it's, it's a choice it's um it, it's a way to make the game not too challenging because you know one hit and Mario goes off like if it was one hit and you die like that would be annoying so they made a compromise with having a timer that ticks down and you gotta collect Mario again, again and if you don't have 30 stars you don't get one 100 percent uh, completion when you beat the level uh so you gotta that's a challenge if you want to do that and it can be annoying but the game also has items that make it easy on you you know that's the there's the 10 and 20 uh star thing you can get you can use at any time so just do it before the level ends and you know uh you don't get them often so that's also a thing but yeah um you know, it's a game that can be annoying to some people, but to me, like, everything about the game is just solid. It's, it feels good to play, it's fun, the music and the graphics are great, it's it's memorable levels and world, and, you know, mo almost every level has something new to it, and, and there's, you know, there's secret levels you can find, bonus games, um... And yeah, it's, it's a game I played so many times. Like, and and I played this on the Game Boy Advance of all systems. So, you know, I I've only really played the SNES version on the Switch. I think I may may play it on emulator a little bit at one time, but you know, I've only played the SNES version, which doesn't seem too different to me, honestly. I don't think there's many differences from the GBA version. I think maybe it's more zoomed out, maybe a little bit. Um, I don't know, but, yeah, uh, so why am I picking this over Hollow Knight? And why am I picking over, over all the other games? And that's what I'm wondering, because it's a game I've had on my, this is my favorite game. This is what I think is my favorite game. That's what I've said for a long time, and do I really believe that? Is there games on here that I enjoy more than this game? Maybe. I don't know. It's so hard to say because a lot of this is 
nostalgia. A lot of this is having played it so many times that I'm like, you know, I uh, don't know if um, I don't know if it's it's just because I have such, such a nostalgic feeling for the game, or if I, it's because it's actually a solid game. But having played it recently, I'm like, no, 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 no. This is great. The gameplay is good. It feels good. It's fun to play. Everything is just as good as I remember it being. And and yeah, um, and that's why it's number one. And that brings me to Hollow Knight, and that's just barely not beating it. And I, one of the reasons why is because it is a recent game. It's a fairly recent game, Hollow Knight, compared to Yoshi's Island. And I have played Yoshi's Island, you know, in my childhood, and that's where I uh, found my love for it. Hollow Knight, I've only played, you know, a, few, uh, a year or two ago, uh, compared to this, like, uh, on, for the first time, and I played on the channel for the second time. So I've only played the game twice. I can't really say it's my favorite game, but it is definitely up there. It's definitely a game that you know, has inspired me in a lot of ways, Hollow Knight. Um, you know, I I have, you know, I have bought a shirt. Uh, I don't have a shirt for your salon. I have had my my phone's wallpaper has been Hollow Knight for the past year or so. Like, uh, and I've had it on my desktop wallpaper. I have my avatar. You know, it, it's a game I will probably think about. And, you, and use for you know uh, you know keep telling people to play keep uh, you know uh, looking up law looking up the music looking up you know everything about the game you know Yoshi's Island you can't say that for Yoshi's Island is the thing you know it's the game is a game that exists you play it and that's not a story that's really deep that's not a you know, it's you know, it's still a Mario game basically, you know. As solid as Mario games are, you know, the story has never been a focus of the games and definitely not this game, it's barely there. But, you know Uh Hollow Knight is, is a game where the story and the world is it's never fully you know, um you can never fully finish it. Never fully find out everything because it's it it's hidden and it's deep and it's you know uh, it's not fully ex explained. You gotta kind of think about it. You gotta uh, put pieces together. Uh, that's that's why I keep thinking about Hollow Knight all the time. You know, and do I think about your selling all the time? Not really. I I haven't played the game since I played it on the Switch for. You know, I, I played it a little bit on the Switch and beat the first one, and then I didn't really play more of it, but that's because I have so many games to play, you know. But, um, you know, it, it's a game I've played so many times that I feel like if I had to pick a game, it has to be one that I want to replay every once in a while. And Yoshi's Island is definitely a game I want to replay again eventually, like, definitely, because it, 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 it keeps being fun to me. And, you know, I don't remember everything about the game, I don't remember where all the secrets are and everything, you know. I do remember, you know, most things about the game, obviously, like, i played it so many times, but... And keep going back to it and, you know, enjoying it, and... That's that's why I, you know, why I play it so many times. I do not want to play games again and again and again, so... Playing, it, playing a game for, like... I don't know. I, I can't say how many times I played, but I think maybe six and seven times, maybe 100%ing it anyway. But that's what I always do when I play it, because there's no reason not to 100% the game, because it's you know, uh, it's not that difficult, and it's not, you know, it's what 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 the game wants also, you know. So anyway, um, and yeah, um. So I, that's why it's number one because it's it, it 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 feels like the game I can say I have played so many times I know where I want to put it on the list and it does it has to be a while until Hollow Knight can beat it until 
uh, you know, a game like Fallout or The Witch uh, can read it. I don't know. I don't know if God of War or Breath of the Wild or Portal 2 or Celeste can possibly be. It's hard to say. A lot of these games are like so good that I really can't say um, where exactly I would put them on the list. I could, it, it, it probably keeps changing for me and it's maybe loose in a lot of ways. So that's you know why I ha hadn't made a list before. Um, so finally making a list and figuring out if Yoshi's Island is still my favorite game is it's hard and I always I, always, I, I really wanted to put Hollow Knight at number one but it's too early I feel you know even though I put games on here that are very recent you know 2018 2019 games uh, um. It has to take a while until I'm like, okay, do I really think this is the best game of all time? Do I really think it deserves top 20? I don't know. Anyway, uh, you know, I'm gonna just go over the honorable mentions here, because I don't want to talk about them in depth. I just want to quickly mention them, uh, just because I feel like it's worth it. So, Earthbound, Half-Life 2, Puppeteer, Horizon Zero Dawn. Out of Wild, Firewatch, Bioshock Infinite, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Odyssey, The Stanley Parable, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, Super Mario 64, Dishonored 1, Thumber, Kingdom Hearts 2, oh, I don't know why I put this here, I don't, well it's an honorable mention, I guess, but, you know, the Kingdom Hearts, game, uh, Kingdom Hearts games are, well, you know, not the best games in the world, but they definitely have an impact on them when you play them, so I guess that's that. Anyway, uh, Crash Batman Could Warped, uh, Red Dead Redemption, Raid, Batman Arkham Asylum, Shovel Knight, Panda Kasui, Charlotte 4, Detroit Become Human, Assassin's Creed Origins, Cuphead, Kitaka. Uh, and yeah, um, these are honorable mentions. A lot of these games easily be in the tw in the top 20 uh, you know I, I'm seeing Horizon Zero Dawn I'm seeing uh, Half-Life 2 that should probably have been there and I'm seeing what other games uh, I'm, I'm like thinking that could probably be in the top 20 uh, mm, Maybe Tropical Freeze, maybe, maybe Earthbound, I don't know, but yeah, um, definitely, you know, other games that uh, I, I feel like are interesting and definitely worth playing, all of them, definitely something you should check out. Uh, so I have, you know, also a top 20 of online games, roguelike, replayable games, those kind of games. Um, and I don't know, it did take a while, so making a whole list for that, I feel like probably would not be out. I don't feel like it's worth it, so I'm just gonna list the top 20 games of online roguelike replayable, those kind of games. So number 20 is, well, is uh, Rocket League, uh, then Binding of Isaac, Grand Theft Auto 4, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, New Super Mario Bros., Little Big Planet, my own Luigi Partners in Time, which is... Not sure why I have this here. Well, actually, yeah, it's because I played that game a lot. That's another game I played a lot of, like I've replayed a lot of times. Probably three to four times, um, at least. It's, you know, it's an RPG, so that's unusual for me. Um, that's probably why it's here. Not really replayable, I would say. It's like, I mean, it, it's an RPG, you can change things out, but... Yeah, my Luigi games are definitely games I played a lot of, and it's definitely something I think, you know, I, it's definitely my most enjoyed RPG series. I guess you can say it's not really a lot of series I can really point out anyway. So I don't know, but yeah, that's probably why it's there. Anyway, uh, number thirteen is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, uh, Minecraft. Super Mario Maker 2, Uncharted 4, huh, 
This is also on here. Yeah. So in my honorable mention, so that's why it's there. Yeah. Anyway. Uh number nine is Counter Spike Source, Pokemon Booby Sapphire, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Team Fortress 2, Call of Duty Black Ops, Uncharted Unch 2, Terraria, Into the Gungeon, and number one is Overwatch. And again, these are all games that kinda kinda changed a lot too because a lot of these games I don't play much anymore. Um but I played so so much of these games, you know, when I played hundreds and hundreds of hours of these games, like you know, especially games like Overwatch, uh, especially games like Call of Duty Black Ops, you know, uh, games you can just online games you can play again and again and again. Like that's I played those kind of games a lot, like and you know the Pokemon games. I put Ruby and Sapphire here because it's uh, nostalgic to me. That's the games I probably played the most. Uh, not sure if it's the best Pokemon games. I don't know. It's hard to say. It depends on who you ask, you know. But to me, I really enjoyed those games a lot. So that's why I put them there. <coughs> oh, God. I'm... This is up talking soon. It's talk, talk for a while, man. Anyway. Uh, Super Mario Maker 2. It's a pretty new game. You know, uh, again, like Super Mario World. It's, it's a game I put here because... Uh, I enjoy making Mario uh, levels, I enjoy playing them, you know. It's, it's hard to put a game like this and, you know, a little big planet on here because it's, it, you know, the levels you play and the levels you make, you know, it, 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 it's hard to really say that they are the best games of all time because, you know, it, it depends on how much enjoyment you find out of that kind of thing, you know. Uh, is it, you can easily find the best game of all time in Mario Maker or in Little Big Planet or Dreams or whatever kind of uh, you know game making tool out there you can find. You know, um, but what those games kind of added to the table to me was like the idea of community made levels being a thing that you know, you know. I, I, Mario hacks and wrong hacking in general was you know a thing before that, but wasn't really a mainstream thing, I guess. So the fact that those were, uh, you know, up there, uh, you know, the fact that those were popular and got people's attention, and you know, a little big planet, especially you, you know, made jobs happen. Like you, if you've heard anything about little big planet, uh. You know, people being offered jobs at Media Molecule uh, because that levels were so good, you know. Uh, they, they, they were like, hey, come work for us, actually. And they did. And yeah, that's crazy that can happen because, you know, a community member just made a level. That's so crazy. And that's why they're up here because, like, the can the, the provides us an interesting, different look and different levels than the developers ever intended that um, you can make crazy things in those kind of games you know uh, and yeah and a lot of online games especially shooters that's what I played a lot of as a teen I guess like Uncharted and Call of Duty and those kind of games and you know games that we, I played a lot of was definitely Grand Theft Auto I played that for a while you know the San Andreas especially that's Oof, I don't know how much I've played of that game. That's like an insane amount. That's, yeah. And Super Smash Bros. Brawl and Ultimate is up here too. Ultimate is better in, in pretty much every way. Uh, but Smash, Smash uh, uh, nah. Brawl is um, more nostalgic to me because uh, it's the first Smash Bros. game I really played and I played it a lot and I was like, man, this is really fun. I really like it. But then I stopped playing it after, you know, the Wii was, you know, getting older and, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't, I played a little bit of uh, Smash 4, um, that's fun, but Super Smash Bros. Ultimate I played, I still played, you know, it's uh, because, you know, it is pretty new also, um, and yeah, it's a... Uh, it's definitely one of the best fighting games. Probably, yeah, it is the best fighting game I have on my list, I guess. So, yeah. 
don't play a whole lot of fighting games, so, you know. Uh, the fact that that game can really still pull me in and make me want to keep playing is definitely something, because it could easily get repetitive, but there's so many characters, so many levels, you know, everything. Even though it's missing some features from Brawl that I really like, like the Subspace Emissary is definitely, you know, better than the World of Light or whatever it's called, so, yeah. But anyway, it, it's enjoyable, it's good. And, you know, I also see a super, new Super Mario Brothers. Uh, yeah, uh, on the DS. Um, again, this game I played a lot of. I replayed it again and again. That's why it's on this list, I guess. Um, I guess replayable means I played them a lot rather than DR replayable. I don't know. I put this list together a month ago or something, so I don't know. Um, but, yeah. Um... That's why it's there, because I've played it a lot on DS, you know, Game Boy Advance and DS, that's that's when I played games a lot repeatedly, because I didn't really have many of them, and, you know, when I was, you know, at my dad's place, because they separated, uh, I had my Game Boy Advance or DS with me, depending on the time, you know. Um, that's when I played those games a lot, and we played them again and again, because I didn't have many games for that system, so... That's why I played those games so many times, and yeah, that's why they're up there. Uh, what else do we have here that's interesting? Uh, Counter-Strike Source, maybe. It's maybe an odd choice for me. Uh, I played that game, you know, it was one of the games I played when I got my first, I wouldn't say gaming PC, it really wasn't at the time, but it was like more advanced PC, you could do it a little bit more than my previous one could, so... That's what I. That's when I played games like that and Skyrim. Uh, oh, I don't have Skyrim on here. Well, I mean, uh, Skyrim is weird for me. It's it's both a game I played a lot of, but also a game I'm hesitant to really recommend because it's not the best game to me. When I played this, I played it so much. I'm like, it has so many issues to me. Um, it, the dungeons are boring and repetitive. The it's glitchy as hell. It's um, the the story isn't as interesting to me as Fallout. It just fantasy in that world has to really provide something more. That's why The Witcher Three is my preferable game to to Skyrim. But it is something I probably should have mentioned on here because it is a game I play a lot of, and you know I wouldn't have played it so much if I didn't actually have something enjoyed it at least a little bit, you know. But anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, Counter-Strike Source is a game I played a lot of, I didn't play the other Counter-Strikes much really, I, yeah, I, I think it's the only one I actually have played, is it? I don't know, but, anyway, Source, you know, uh, you know, is a game I played a lot of, and I played a lot of, uh, you know, community-made things in the game, you know, that's why I really enjoy it, because you could make some weird things that weren't intended again. And, uh, you know, there was the surfing levels, there was the weird, uh, what do you call it, like, role-playing things you could do, you know, those kind of things, like, totally different from the normal gameplay, which was, you know, eh, it's kind of like, okay, it's not my favorite, because it's, people really skill at it, <laughs> like, that's the thing, uh, it's a very difficult game to play, because the reflexes of people are insane in that game. Um, you really gotta be very, very good if you wanna actually play the game for real. And that's why I stuck to, you know, custom made things like that and played a lot of that. And it was really fun and enjoyable, but eventually I was like, I got bored of it. It was like, the skill, the skill ceiling was too high for me a lot of the time. There was a lot of hackers, that's why I stopped playing mostly. And also, there was other games to play, you know. Uh, but it's definitely a game I enjoyed a lot of when I first got my first gaming PC, I guess, so, yeah, um, and Uncharted is here twice, on both 4, uh, 4 and 10, I, I should clarify, Uncharted 2 is on spot 4, and Uncharted 4 is on spot 10, that's confusing, but anyway, yeah, Uncharted 4 is only on 10, because it's a game I mostly played for the online, uh, and I played it a lot, but I played Uncharted 2 way more, I think. I'm pretty sure I did. I played both of them. 
but be- I played Uncharted 2 at a different time than I played Uncharted 4. I played only Uncharted 4 relatively recently, and I only finished the story mode recently too. I I had the game for a little bit, but I only played the online portion because I must have played through Uncharted 4, so, you know. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and Into the Gungeon here is number two. Also, I think we should explain that because, yeah, uh, I have Binary of Isaac at number 19. I enjoy Into the Gungeon more. Uh, I've talked about it before. Um, it, it, it's just a game I could play and play again and again and again. And even now, I've played it so many times that in some ways I don't want to go back, but I still am missing a few guns and a few items and I could still replay it a lot of times until I get all of them and they made a new update relatively recently, at least I think so, like this year they had a new update that was like the final thing and it added so many new things and I haven't even done much of that yet because I played the game so much before that and I'm like a little exhausted of it, so it's a game I want to definitely want to go back to eventually in my and try to find new things that I haven't before. And number three is Terraria, which is, again, a game that I think I should talk about because I have Minecraft at number 12, and both these games, you know, are similar. You know, one is 2D, one is 3D, obviously, so it's similar in some ways, but, you know, Terraria you know, is obviously inspired by Minecraft, and I think Terraria just, it's a game I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did, but I always think back of it, I'm like, man, I really want to play Terraria again because... You know, it's a game that kept getting updated. It, it may still be updating to this day. I don't really know much, but yeah, it's uh, it always had new things. It always had a, uh, you know, it, it had like bosses and kind of not story, but like uh, you know, you could finish finish the game sort. I guess um, definitely you know had it's definitely a game you could play for a long time and then eventually, you know get to sort of an ending which is when I stopped playing because we're like okay well that's not much, much else to do now I guess <laughs> but yeah probably a game I could go back to now and be like oh well I'm like holy crap they added so much new things to the game properly and yeah it's, it's so fun to play that game because it's like you know the combat in the game is strange I guess you would say it's like you know it's a, it's a weird game because uh, it is, you know, building based, but it also has more of a combat focus, but also it's weird, like, the combat in the game has so many different weapons and guns and, well, I don't know if you have guns, but, you know, it has the magic things you can use all the time, you know, I used magic a lot in the game and that was fun, the crazy weapons you can get, uh, yeah, definitely a very enjoyable game that I, I look back on and I'm like, man, that was really fun to play, I want to go back to that game. But I don't know if I will eventually. Alright, I think I talked about most of these games at least a little, little bit. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, way, way longer than I thought this video was going to be, but I should have probably known it was going to be a long video. <laughs> since I had 20 games and I wanted to talk about each of them, but anyway. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, this was a different video. Um, than my normal videos, cause yeah, I don't didn't play a game. I've been talking about games for a long time though, and yeah, I just wanted to, sh you know, have this on my channel just because I felt like I need to explain why I play the games I do and why I, you know, my what my favorite games are and why I play these kind of games and yeah, eventually maybe one of these days I'm gonna play one of the games on my list. I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, I played Hollow Knight, I guess, so. But that was, you know, because I wanted to replay it because I was on PC and, you know, for free on Xbox Game Pass and whatnot. So I was like, yeah, I might as well replay it on my channel since I get the chance. I played on the Switch first, so. Anyway. But yeah. Um, that's it. So, wait so long. I, I did this while I was heating my oven. And now it's probably been heating for an hour, which is probably not a good idea, but whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's why I did this video, because I was preheating my oven. Turned out this was way longer than I thought it was going to be, so... Eh, well, here we are. That's it. See you next time.